Hello there, welcome back to, well, France and Ben and Napoleon. We're currently doing very well. We have secured our route to Vienne, and basically we also have secured our route to uh, to uh, to Moscow here. Moscow. And it will be, as well, rather easy, to be perfectly honest. Uh, also, the fact that Brandenburg now has taken the entirety of the uh, area is also very, very neat, because uh, we can probably use this to our advantage. Brandenburg does have a strong army, though, so they could be dangerous to deal with. I'm pretty sure we won't have too many problems. In terms of coalition map mode, there's a lot of people who are mad at us that might want to join a coalition, but it's basically just Pope, Luca, Austria, Bavaria, and that are basically the people who are really, really pissed at me. Scandinavia doesn't care. It's a little bit pissed, but it doesn't really care. And the same goes for a lot of the countries in the area. So in terms of potential coalitions here, even though the game says I could get one, I think that is based on... Uh, <clears throat> I think that was based on uh, uh, how should I put this the um, the points that I would have gotten in a gross expansion minus the uh, minus the uh, twenty percent I believe it is that I get from my influence ideas here oh sorry yeah minus twenty percent so if it was a full hundred percent and not an accretions I would probably get the coalition as stated but uh, <clears throat> since I didn't I am fine. Now, the Pope here, I would like to declare one, him, but uh, we do have a Regency Council, so this one's going to go very, very slowly. The Regency Council is uh, for Louis here. He's 641, so he's not too crappy. Uh, Military-wise, we might get into a tiny bit of a problem, but we should be fine. We do need another rival too, but the Regency Council is 402. It could be troublesome, and it will last for 13 years. So I think what we'll do here is... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, most likely do some buildings of army. Well stuff. So I have to figure out where we want to build these things and how we want to handle it, but uh, currently it's going well. I don't really need the manpower, so I think I should focus on improving the economy a tiny bit. So let's see here. Do we have anything that would actually benefit me a little bit? Nope. Most of these are 0 point 13, 16. A lot of these are not rich, and that's basically because I haven't been upgrading them at all. <coughs> trade depot, trade power, things like that. But yeah, we'll have to see. I might go landform slim it around. I might build something else, but for now I'll just leave it be. I'll focus on my war with England, which is also East Frisia, Gallery, Magdeburg, and Utrecht, our parts. We need to deal with that. But of course, to go with the war with England is just eat the colonies and hand them over to uh, hand them over to well my colonial officers in the area, if you will. So it should be perfectly fine. It's going to cost me a bit on. The uh, the diplomacy point score, sadly. <coughs> but again, uh, aggressive expansion wise, I should be perfectly fine to just fly countries. So I think I'm actually just pissing off the natives in this area, and of course, England itself. But other than that, we should be very much fine. So this will be part of the goal. But as you can see, it's incredibly expensive to take the uh, English colonies. So, in eating England is going to be a, well, harsh thing to do, it looks like. So I think this will have to be the piece that we'll go for. It's a perfect 100. They might set up another few colonies, but that's just what we'll have to deal with. 120 aggressive expansion. Uh, a lot of countries could consider joining. But uh, I think I will be fine. I just need to get the others out of the war, and then we can relax. Because we will have 13 years to burn off just aggressive expansion. And the Ottomans now rivaling Austria is definitely good news. Um, if Austria now get in trouble with uh, the Ottomans, that is going to turn into, well, a very, very interesting and very, very nice situation for us. Now, in terms of Russia, I'm a little bit unsure I want to deal with them, but I think we're going to, next we'll go up to Kostroma and potentially Yaroslav, so I'll just fabricate claim on uh, on those two. So that should be fine. But yeah, for the time being, we will sit back, we'll relax, and we'll figure out how we want to deal with this. Never mind, René Descartes, French mathematician, scientist, and philosopher René Descartes, has been called father of modern philosophy because he was one of the first to oppose scholastic Aristotelianism. He began by methodically doubting knowledge based on authority, the senses, and reason, and then found that certainty in the intuition that when he is thinking he exists, this expression is the famous term, I think, therefore I am. The Scottus developed a dualistic system in which he distinguished radically between mind, the essence of which it's thinking a matter of. Um, 
I'm butchering the English language today, so I won't read the rest. 30 free admin power and 10 legitimacy. That is actually pretty good, especially considering that I do have a Regency Council, but we are at 100 legitimacy. So that Regency Council won't hurt me for... Uh, it won't hurt me too much, but it will be a little bit painful to deal with. But yeah, I do have some enemies to deal with, and I don't really want to challenge them in the mountains, but I don't think I have a choice. I will have, also have to use the fleet here to transport the troops into the enemy territory. Which could be interesting, let's just be perfectly honest. But yeah, we're going to challenge Gelrus army here in the mountains. Uh, we might lose this one, well, I'll harshly, they don't have a good general either, but I got a crossing modifier and a terrain modifier. Neither of which are good, so I would have been very helpful here, you know, if you could just use some of your manpower to help deal with this problem. But I think still we will just win this battle by Hez Brett. We'll be sacrificing a lot of men, of course, but let's just be perfectly honest. I have the manpower that allows me to actually do this kind of wasting. That's the best part about this. I can waste this manpower. No second thoughts. But yeah, we're going to move our troops into <coughs> the enemy areas. Uh, because the fact is that if I can just... Uh, if I can just... Uh, get them out of the wall, then I can allow my war explosion to go down as well, while being at uh, peace, so it's mostly just benefits to uh, to end this war quickly. Now, I'll do the sieging, I'll get everything done, but if anything interesting happens, I'll show you. Other than that, I'll just focus on getting it done, and uh, we'll see what happens afterwards. We end up in one battle that's kind of awkward. Um, I sent my army here to, well, take Breda. And then the Gelder army of, well, about half the troops attacked me. And they're actually doing a pretty good job at damaging me. But, uh, as you can see, we dealt the most damage, which is the important part. And we'll just siege, basically, Holland. And also sieging Breda here should be enough to get Gelder out of the wall. And then we'll have to deal with uh, Friesland here. And, of course, uh, Magdeburg. That should be very straightforward and very easy. 1640, the five-year limit on the war is also getting very very quickly closer but again if I can just piece out these guys I should have no problems whatsoever so for now we'll allow the war to continue and we'll see what happens as you can see colonies actually do bring treasure fleets so I just randomly get money and well gold technically rich gold and silver mines of French Mexico so French Mexico is currently delivering money to me which is nice uh, we do actually have a little bit of a problem here to say Utrecht army in uh, the New World, but uh, we'll ignore that for now. Uh, but yeah, 300 gold and some inflation. Take it if you take it if you want it. Is this Holland? No, it's Big Mac. So I, I was concerned that for no good reason. But uh, <clears throat> with that said, we are dealing with Utrecht and we are dealing with Galeran. I still remember this as Holland. I'm very sad to have seen them going overseas, but. Not much we can do about that. Uh, I'll sit back siege and, again, see if we can get the problem dealt with. To be fair, there's nothing I really want from these guys. Uh, Gallery, I could, for instance, go ahead and get some money from, because war operations. Um, I don't have any desire to have very low truce timers with these guys or anything of the sort. So, basically just taking their money is more than good enough for me, to be perfectly honest, and that is, of course, what I will be doing. It will not weaken them much, but weaken them a tiny bit. And, of course, it will help my economy grow even more. So, how can I complain? But the war here with England is technically done. The war score, though, has gone up a tiny bit, which is a problem. I have no idea why it has gone up, but I would presume one of these colonies have actually become a... Uh, <clears throat> what's it? What am I call it? A... Uh, a... Um, a full-fledged colony. A province. Sorry. But yeah, we'll be going for this instead, Dan. We'll pay off a lot of people, of course, but uh, it'll be fine. And how about you guys give up your cause on... Well, anything, really. As long as you give me prestige, I will be happy with it. Let's actually sort by prestige here, because uh, the colonies have won war score. And they also do ha <coughs> give one prestige at the very least. So we can have the English get rid of some of their cause, and... We'll take two of the provinces, but with this 10-year, well, it will be a 15-year truce anyways, but I do have a regions council in the middle of it, which makes it a little bit awkward. So as you can see, the real aggressive expansion total is 36.5, but without any bonus, I would have 48.7. <clears throat> so, not really much to do with that right now, but of course, could have been a problem. 
So let's just go ahead and call both of these new ones, and we'll also go ahead and upgrade Diplomatic Attack to level 19, War Galleon. Maximum Colonial Range increased by 50, the uh, War Galleon and Frigate can now be built, as well as uh, the creation of a Grand Shipyard. So, what we're going to do now is actually upgrade our boats. And this is going to be very much an expensive affair, very much so. But we have uh, quite a bit of core construction here, as you can see, going on. We have uh, the Scandinavian cores, they're slowly but surely being constructed, so we'll have to deal with that, but uh, I think we'll be fine. Norway, of course, also is something that I will need to just get rid of because they could, in theory, colonize, but not only that, but uh, I need them to just clean off the map a little bit. So we'll have to see what we do. But for now, I'll sit back and I'll allow Rishi's Council to do most of its job, and then I'll come back to you. Currently, I've done some minor adjustments. I've deleted the surplus force, like the one in the middle of England, the one in Arcus Hughes, uh, there's plus one up here in Neva. But what we're going to do now is actually do a little bit of an upgrade of, uh, well, our forts here. I'm going to be upgrading the ones in France proper to uh, Star Bastions, or Star Forts basically for defense purposes. I'm going to do the same thing with the one down here. And the reason why I want to upgrade them to that point is very, very simple. Uh, by, well, doing such an upgrade, we're going to first and foremost be able to control Europe rather easily, as long as we keep the fortresses under our control, of course. But uh, also on the second hand, I'll have built a single level one fort over here. And the reason for that is basically we want to have a little bit of an easier time controlling the Russians. There will just be one venue where they can just, well, rush out, in theory. So I have to see how we want to deal with that, but still, it will limit the movements of the Russians a tiny bit. But as I said, we're going to upgrade three forts in uh, in France and Italy into maximum sized forts. And that is very, very costly. It cost me 2,400. We could also go ahead and take National Arsenal. Naval force size plus 25 percent. Constructed garrison, garrison size plus 25 percent. Uh, we'll probably get this, of course, down the line. But for now, I'll have to just wait because uh, the army, in terms of money we're making, it's not too much. So, uh, in terms of to upgrade this for the 650 ducats, so we'll be standing peacefully by, and I'm mothballed all my faults in order to make this a little bit easier on the economy. Uh, send them whatever they need. Well, multi. Well, I guess we'll send the money. It's not a big deal. It's five months worth of uh, of ducats or one delivery from uh, our good old friends. Oh, that might be a very big problem. Ambois has become a full-fledged colony. But I just realized one of the reasons why I'm losing money is most likely, co well, the colonies that I sapped from England. Uh, let's see here. Rebel factions, yes. Where are my colonies? Yes, this one. As you can see, I sapped or I stole this one from England, and it just needs to be finished because if not, I'm going to be paying a lot of money for just that. But yes, I have also been improving relations with Genoa, but uh, right now Genoa isn't really my main concern. It's Bohemia because we are currently allied. But that's just barely, so I definitely need to improve relations here. And the first set of calls from the Scandinavian conquest have been completed, which is good. But yeah, I'll be improving relations with uh, with Bohemia here, and that should make it possible for us to uh, to deal with that. Uh, in terms of uh, episode length, these are going to be between 10 and 50 minutes, just to keep things going. So uh, we'll have to see just how things turn out. But uh, they'll probably be between 10 and 15 minutes. So we're going to end it here. Thank you for watching. Please have a comment, praise, criticism, anything you feel like. And uh, we'll continue this next time. Hopefully get done with the Regency Council. But we've done a little bit of uh, switch-ups here. So we ha we're currently well improving our fortresses for the future wars. And I'm a little bit not sure how I want to handle the current situation, if you will. I will have to find Austria again, of course. Their allies are... Not really that scary. But it means basically that I will mostly just have to focus on setting up a front line in the Milan mountains. Probably see if I can get an alliance up with Milan again. Uh, of course, for reason this honor the alliance, yeah, so it's going to take a while. But uh, basically, once the research council is done, I guess that would be vanish. It would take five, six more years. So uh, we'll try and get a alliance with Milan again, because being able to defend in the mountains and have them in a war with me is very helpful against Austria. But uh, to be perfectly fair, Austria does not have that much of a military anymore. 
As you see, I have 204,000 troops. It's more than... Uh, well, it's as much as the next three on the list combined. And Austria has 62,000, where 28,000 of those are mercenaries. So, uh, things are definitely going to get very interesting. To put it this way, I'm the only one who's in the triple digits when it comes to manpower. The only one who actually has a fair amount of manpower is Manchu. Uh, other than that, most of them have 20,000. 26,000 with Russia here is basically the highest on the list, besides me and Manchu. So, I think it seems the AI has become very good at wasting it. To be perfectly honest, and the funny thing here is, we can actually see the entire map. China fell apart, or Ming, not surprisingly, fell apart. We have Manchu here, of course, being big. Japan formed, um, big Bamanas, Persia, Delhi is being kind of well, taking everything. Bukhara. Now, also, while I'm in the habit of switching the map, we can have a look at the religion. As you can see, Protestant is spreading through, well, my conquered lands, sadly, like a wildfire. We also have the same problem in England and Scotland. But, uh, as and as, you can see, north, north is basically Protestant, middle is Reformed, and then you have a south, a southern Catholic, well, area. And the funny thing is, Lithuania has actually flipped to Protestant, so that's going to be interesting. But I'll see you next time. Bye!